Hello and welcome to Prime Sports with me, Razak Musbao. Now the draw for the 2026 World Cup qualifying campaign, African qualifying campaign, has been held in Ivory Coast during the CAF 45th Anniversary General Assembly. The fifth four member countries were distributed into nine groups of six with the Black Stars of Ghana drawn in Group I for the qualifiers. Now let's take a look at um, the group for Ghana. And uh, you can see in Group I where Ghana is placed, Mali is also in there. Madagascar is in there, Central African Republic is in there, and Comoros is also in there alongside Chad. Now, there's also Group A, Group B, Group C, Group D, all the way to H alongside I, and we will go through all of that. But this is Ghana's group, and these are uh, the countries Ghana have to beat and top the group to qualify for the 2026 World Cup. However, if they're unable to top the group, there is still an opportunity for them to qualify to the 2026 World Cup. Now, joining me in studio is Daniel Crantino by Joy Sports Dex, and he's been following this draw, and he's here to help us appreciate the qualifying process of this 2026 World Cup. Yeah, so um, the Black Stars of Ghana, as you said, are in yeah. Group I. Um, the standard thing is that the various, there are nine groups of six teams mm. in Africa. Uh, Africa have automatic nine or nine automatic sports at the next World Cup. You know, it's been increased okay. because of the, the increase in numbers of teams that will be heading to the 2026 a World Cup in USA, Mexico, and then Canada. Mm. So you need to top your group in order to get an automatic qualification group. However, if you don't top, and if you are part of the best four runners up in the continent, you go into a mini competition within Africa, that's the best top four, mm -hmm. and then you play a competition, a mini competition, the winner of that will then enter another uh, playoff final between another country from a different zone, mm. and then the winner will join um, in the World Cup. So. So that, there are two, two qualifying yeah, two rounds, qualifying actually. Rounds. One, you have to top your group, top your group. where you're playing uh, five other countries five in that group. It's in the home and away. Yes, basis. and in the event that you're unable to top your group, but however you come second, yeah. compared to all other teams that came second in their in group. In the nine other groups. In their nine other groups. Yeah. And then you get to be part of a four... The That's 14. the four best second runners up. In the Africa. first runners up. Yes, in, in Africa. Africa. So they are paired in the Blazer tournament. A mini tournament. <laughs> then the winner of that mini tournament uh -huh. will then go outside Africa to take on a playoff. Play a playoff. playoff with, yes, with another uh, country from another zone. That's, and a, then that's a tall order. Very tall. Order. Real that is tall very order. hectic. So the basic thing is just finish top of your group. Just finish top of just your group. Just finish top. Now, if, if, if you look at Ghana, we have Mali in there. We've played Mali before. Um, Ghana, uh, Madagascar, we played them before, of course. Central African Republic, we have Comoros, we have, and Chad is the only country that Ghana is yet to have a competitive game against. Let me just get your quick thoughts mm -hmm. away from the process for, uh, as far as qualification is concerned to the group that we are seeing now. Mm -hmm. Does Ghana stand a chance if you consider our current form? Of course, we'll be joined on the phone by former Black Stars player Ajiman Bedu pretty shortly, but let me just get your quick thoughts on this group. Do we stand a chance to qualify? Um, if this was five, ten years ago, this would have been a simple task for the Black Stars. But as you said, considering our current form, this is an extremely difficult group. We are talking about a Madagascar and Central African Republic who we are currently um, in the same AFCON group. Yep. We fail to beat them away from home. And as you mentioned, in the AFCON draw, you have to finish in the top two in order to get automatic qualification. Mm. And that, even that one, we are heading to the last day to be able to secure our qualification. In this one, you need to top the group. Mm. And that's why it becomes very difficult. And we all know the importance of uh, home form when it comes to African football. So if you're able to get some good points away, mm. um, it, it, will help your, it will help your cause. So we've struggled in recent times against Madagascar, failed to beat them um, away from home. We failed to beat Central Africa Republic away from home. Comoros beat us in the AFCON to deny us a place in the round of 16. Mm. Mali have been a very difficult opponent for Ghana across board, be it under 17, under 20, under 23. Mali have been extremely difficult for Ghana to beat. I think Chad is the only team there that Ghana doesn't necessarily have a, a recent history with. But mm. when you look at it on paper, you expect the Black Stars to qualify. But I say, again, uh, considering our current form, um, <laughs> it will be very difficult. For it will be very difficult teams. when you consider Ghana's current form uh, over there. Well, let's uh, try and speak to one man who has been in this very uh, situation before. He's played qualifying, World Cup qualifying games with the Black Stars. I even played at the World Cup itself. So you quite appreciate what it means, uh, the situation that the current crop of Black Stars players find themselves in. And he's the man, Emmanuel Ajibambedu, former Black Stars midfielder, and also was part of the under-20 team that won the World Cup in 2009. Uh, Emmanuel Ajibambedu, thank you very much if you have joined us. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on Prime Sports tonight.
Uh, great. If, if you can hear me, uh, legend. I mean, yeah, I can, I can hear you perfectly. Wonderful. You've seen the group. Let me get your first thoughts on, you know, the, the group that Ghana find itself in as far as a qual qualification for next World Cup is concerned. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think um, uh, on paper it's manageable, but a bit tricky as well. Uh, a bit tricky to the extent that uh, nowadays football has really changed. Uh, on the scores, you need to do a lot. Uh, and nowadays, paper doesn't work anymore in modern football. So it's manageable and a bit tricky. Looking at the group, or the countries you are going to face, for the past three years, apart from Chad, you have played all the countries, and you know them, they know us. Um, October 2020, we had a friendly game against Mali, you were beating 3-0. January 2022, we also what happened against Comoros in the African Cup of Nations. Lost 3-2 to them. June 2022 as well, Central African Republic was 1-1-2. And June 2023 against Madagascar, it was draw. So it means um, for this five countries, uh, the results were not that good for us. It wasn't favorable. So... That's why I say it's manageable, but it's very tricky. So we need to work hard, come together as a country, and pray that we are, our boys will get good free season, injury free, and get good play, uh, playing time so that we can tackle the game. But look at them, I think, tricky but manageable. Well, I mean, of course, we've seen the performance of the Black Stars in the recent Afghan qualifiers. Um, it hasn't particularly been impressive. If it was, they would have qualified by now. Uh, do you think um, that performance possibly will give some boost to all the other countries in our group, that Ghana is possibly not the Ghana that, you know, has always known to be? So uh, they will possibly fancy a win, picking all points against Ghana. So in going to face these countries, we shouldn't be complacent at all. Well, um, this is qualified. We can't be complacent. Uh, my do, we have six countries and one is qualified. We have, we have Mali there, which everybody knows their strength. So you can't be complacent. Yes, they have a very good result against us. Yes, we are struggling a bit to qualify. But this is Ghana. Once things trigger and we turn to the right side, you know what we can do. We have all the quality. That's why I said the most important thing right now is not about the GSA, it's not about the coaches, it's about my colleagues, that is the players. They need to have a very good precision in the three and have a good playing time. So that when they are coming, they can be sharp, they can be ready for third game. Because the group we are in, if we, we don't do things well, it, it might cause a disaster to us. It's very tricky and very manageable, but a bit dangerous as well. Looking at some of the, um, the score lines that have gotten against us, it will give them a, a bit of good self confidence. But this is Ghana. Uh, when it comes to qualify like this, you will struggle, or struggle, but whatever it is, you will qualify. So I'm very confident. Well, uh, Manaji Mavidi, we appreciate your time uh, this evening. And, of course, we hope that the Black Stars will do what is necessary to qualify. That's the Manaji Mavidi, former Black Stars I, player. I might, I might do. Uh, we don't need to co concentrate only on the footballers. This okay. kind of game, you know where the World Cup is going on. Mm -hmm. The decision of most of 10 years is in their hands as well. Because in America, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, legend, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate oh, thank it. You very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Daniel, so we've heard from the legend. He says that Ghana should not be complacent. Let me get your final words on this. Yeah, extremely. Look, it's, it's, it's going to be extremely tough. Um, as he said, on paper, it's supposed to be manageable. But if we do things right, I don't see a reason why the Black Stars cannot um, qualify for the 2026 uh, World Cup. It's really important that we do. And I still believe that this team has enough quality. They have a very good technical bench that can sail us through if we do the right things. Mm. If we do the right things. Yeah, well, some no. of you have reactions. Some of you have been expressing optimism. And you can see this uh, Augustine Mensa is at 2026. I'm going to America. And this Lion, uh, he said, if we can qualify, then we need to win. Okay, so Augustine Mensa, 2026. I'm going to America. So we must do everything possible for us to qualify. And Obiba JK, he said, we were seriously praying for a group like this, no disrespect to other counterparts, though. And Trap Evans, he says, the stars will qualify, though. Of uh, course, people are talking about Mali, but they finally would say to Blake, Kanute, Diara, they couldn't 
uh, now uh, not know and with Chris Eaton, an experienced coach inside club, if he can't qualify, then the team should be disbanded and, and sack himself. He said, we'll qualify, but not easy. And another comment down there says, very tough group we have over there. And um, so uh, that's a few comments on Twitter. But let's take a look at uh, the full draw, uh, starting from Group A and uh, B, C, D. And then we'll head to Nigeria and Kenya to get some reaction after this draw. So Group A, we have Egypt, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Sierra Leone, Ethiopia and Djibouti. In Group B, we have Senegal, Congo, Mauritania, Togo, Sudan and South Sudan. And in Group C, that's where Nigeria is, alongside South Africa, Benin, Zimbabwe, Rwanda and Lesotho. And of course, we'll be getting some reaction from a Nigerian journalist pretty shortly. But then, when you go to the other group in D, in E, in F and in G, just look at that. Cameroon, Cabo Verde. Angola, Libya, Eswatini, Mauritius. Then in Group E, you have Morocco, Zambia, Congo, Tanzania, Niger, and Eritrea. Then in Group F, that's where you find Cote d'Ivoire, you find Gabon, and you find Kenya, the Gambia, Burundi, and Seychelles. And of course, we'll be getting some reaction from our Kenyan counterpart also on this one. Group G is Algeria, Guinea, Uganda, Mozambique, Botswana, Somalia. Then in Group H, Tunisia, Equatorial Guinea, Namibia, Malawi, Liberia, Sao Tome, and Principe, and of course, Group I, where Ghana, Mali, Madagascar, Central African Republic, and Comoros, likewise, Chad, are in there. So let's get to Nigeria now and get some reaction from Nigerian brothers relative to this draw, how the country has been receiving it. And we are joined by Deji, a uh, sports journalist based in Nigeria. And of course, uh, just also mentioned that Eric Njuru also joins us all the way from Kenya to get some reaction. Guys, thanks for making time with us here on Joe News and in Ghana. But let me start with you, uh, Deji, in Nigeria. Of course, we've seen your group, very interesting group there, uh, alongside South Africa and Benin. I mean, how the reaction been in Nigeria after this draw? I mean, of course, because of Ghana, you couldn't make it to the last World Cup, but there's a final opportunity for you without Ghana. Well, uh, thank you very much for having me this evening. Um, I mean, it was met with mixed reactions, really. And that was because of the next suit we have with Bene Republic. And um, the former Super Eagles coach that took us to the last World Cup in 2018, um, Kenneth now manages the squares of Bene Republic. And um, immediately, Nigerians felt the vengeance there. And for um, Bene Republic, we've always had a good record against them. They are neighbors. Uh, but in the 14 times we've met them, we've won 12 times and just drawn twice. But, I mean, with Kenneth Raw, he's a master when it comes to qualifying. Uh, but definitely in terms of pressure now, in terms of quality, the Super Eagles trumps them in all aspects. Then the South Africans come into the fray. Um, supposedly, they have this imaginary rivalry with Nigeria. Uh, but on paper, it's always not the same. Um, we have a better head to head record than South Africa. In fact, they've not scored against us again in the qualifiers in the last four matches. The uh, last time we met them in a competitive game was at the AFCON in 2019 in Egypt, where we beat them in the quarterfinals. And it's literally been a roller coaster for the Super Eagles then. But the Super Eagles we have now on Paolo Pesero has not been flying. And um, Nigerians have been scared and worried. Um, we lost to Syria alone in Nigeria during the AFCON qualifiers for Cote d'Ivoire next year. Um, we struggled. I um, mean, the, the game against um, 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 Lesotho, too. So it's, it's, it's obvious that the bot language is not so good, and teams like South Africa as well as Benin Republic want to capitalize on that. Mm. But, I mean, after losing out to Ghana in the last qualifiers for the World Cup, um, it's almost seen like a bet right for Nigerians. The last time we failed to qualify for the World Cup was in 2006, and the then NFF president, Ibrahim Galadima, had to resign. Uh, Majukinik did not resign after Ghana beat Nigeria, but, I mean, this transition... Uh, with um, Ibrahim Gosso, they know that the mandate is to qualify uh, for the World Cup in the United States and Mexico. Mm, interesting. Eric, let me come to you now. And, uh, and of course, I know uh, Kenya will be looking to represent, you know, be at the World Cup for the very first time. And just looking at your group, not so sure how that was received back in Kenya. How was it received, Eric? <laughs> well, listen, you know, when it's big World Cup in Kenya, it's it's let's say it's a long dream i mean we've not been a consistent team in the cup of nations so going for the world cup obviously it's a it's a long process for us but i mean guys are excited about this we're coming back with it to football because 
Kenya has been suspended by FIFA in the last two to three years, and now this will be our first competition since COVID time. Yes. And we've seen the draw today, there were mixed reaction guys saying that we need to turn up, we need to show that we can do something. I mean, the key thing for this country is targeting to qualify for the Cup of Nations in 2025 because we're not taking part in this year's Cup of Nations. Mm. But I think, realistically speaking, we don't have a chance to go to the World Cup. Listen, we're playing Ivory Coast, we're playing Gabon, we're playing the Gambia. I mean, you've seen the Gambia the last couple of months. They are, the young teams have been doing the under 23s, under 18s, under 19s. So, I mean, for me, I would want my team to qualify for the World Cup, but I can tell you though, we really don't have facilities to do that. I think it will be exciting games that's coming into Nairobi every course. I mean, that's like Gabon. We we support like we watch the Premier League here in Kenya, so guys are excited to see this stuff coming back mm. and people are happy to go to the stadium once again. So for us I think it's more of like seeing what your team can do. But I don't think many people expect our team to qualify for the World Cup. So we'll be trying to do our best for this one. Um, guys, I have to let you go, but let me get a quick comment, maybe in 30 seconds from each of you. With the exception of the groups that uh, your country found themselves in, any other group that interested you when you saw the, uh, the, you know, the parents? Let me start with you, Eric. Well, I think I can look at the group. I think the group for Group C, that is Nigeria and South Africa, it's, it's interesting. I remember the last World Cup, South Africa and Ghana, they went all the way to the playoffs and South Africa lost. Obviously, they have had a few issues to do the referee on there, but it, it would be interesting to see how Nigerians and South Africans go head to head. I know they still have another chance to go through the playoff, but I think this will be a good one. Like I've seen Juliet Power say, they, this will be the Afro beats and the Ama Piano Derby. <laughs> interesting there. Well, Deji, let me come to you. With the exception of the group Nigeria find itself, any other group that interests you really? I mean, I like the group of um, Egypt in Group A. Um, mm. I mean, we know they are not um, fantastic when it comes to qualifying, mm. um, especially for the World Cup. They have a very terrible record, uh, despite uh, dominating Africa in terms of the nation's cup. Mm. I feel Burkina Faso have got some young group of stars uh, that are um, evolving from their junior level to the senior level, and it can cause a bit of upset for Egypt. So mm. uh, it's one group that's certainly interesting. Well, guys, thanks very much for your time. And, of course, we'll see when the qualifiers start in November. We'll see how uh, all the themes fare. And uh, we wish your respective countries the very best. Now, uh, the GFA Disciplinary Committee has handed a one-year ban to assistant referee Patrick Papala after he disallowed a 90-minute goal by Hatterfolk in a Ghana Premier League game against RTU at the Craft Sports Stadium. Now, according to the committee, the goal was correctly scored with a scoreline possibly ending 2-2 instead of the 2-1 which went in favor of Real Tom the United. However, some football enthusiasts on social media think the ban was too harsh because the incident was too close to call. First of all, let's see the incident and get you some reaction from social media because of this very um, incident. By the center referee. The assistant referee has now been banned for one year. There are those who say uh, the, the, the call was very close and it possibly will take a VR for you to get it clearly. And you can see some of the comments on social media, Ahin Asamwa. Uh, he says, it's harsh since the new offside rule applicable here is new and they probably were not trained on it. I thought it was an offside when it happened, but the deflection from the defender placed all the offside players on according to the new rule. And this one also says, too harsh. And uh, that's Abdul Baki Adamu. I think in matters of this nature, the refs must reason, uh, uh, reason must be made public. So we understand his reasoning. Those are some comments on social media. Quite very mixed comment there. Some thinking that's all we have for you on Prime Sports tonight. For me, Razak Musbao.